Hello everyone, welcome back to another anatomy video. In this video, we will talk about the anatomy of the equine metacarpus and digits. So let's get started. Okay, and now let's uh, move and talk about the metacarpal bones of the uh, horse. In the horse, three metacarpal bones are present. Uh, the second, the third, and uh, the metacarpal bone number four. So that means metacarpal bone number one and number five are absent in the horse um, as you can see here only the metacarpal bone number three is very developed and uh, number two and number four located medially and laterally uh, they are reduced somehow they have like head and the bottom is down there so here in the proximal extremity, if we look uh, proximally there, we have uh, the articular surfaces of the uh, conon bone. So conon bone is another name for the metacarpal bone number three, while metacarpal bone number two and four, we can call them as splint bones. So here we have the articular surface uh, for the articulation with the distal row of the uh, carpal bones. Here in the dorsal view uh, on the uh, proximal extremity of uh, the metacarpal bone number three, we can see the uh, metacarpal tuberosity. If we, if we move down, we have here the body and uh, in the distal extremity, we can see the metacarpal trochlea, which had in the middle like a sagittal crest here. On each side of the metacarpal no bone number three, lateral and medial, we have a prominence and like a depression for a ligament attachment. And now let's move to the uh, Balmar view. In this case, here we can see very clear the two uh, reduced metacarpal bones, number two and number four. Uh, in the middle of the body, if we look there, we can find the nutrient foramen. The nutrient foramen of the third metacarpal bone is located a little bit more toward the uh, to the toward the second metacarpal bone so that means a little bit medially and so we can use this one to know which uh, metacarpal bone are there you know the second or the fourth and in this view also it's very clear here down the metacarpal trochlea with the sagittal crest in the middle if you look exactly here, we can see that the medial part of the trochlea is a little bit or slightly bigger than the lateral one. And here, of course, we would like to mention that uh, the metacarpal bone number two and four uh, are fused with the metacarpal bone number three in the horse. Okay, and now let's move and talk about the digits uh, in the horse. As you know, only one digit is present so in the horse we have just one digit which consists of three phalanges three phalanges so we have here the proximal phalanx the middle phalanx and the distal phalanx of course uh, we can name these phalanges also as uh, b1 or uh, the uh, phalanx number one and b2 and uh, b3 and of course uh, we uh, B3 it, it has like a, its own very uh, specific shape and that's why uh, it has another name called uh, the coffin bone coffin bone because this bone is embedded inside the hoof so it's embedded completely inside the hoof so we can name it as a coffin bone so um, let's uh, look at the proximal phalanx in the uh, proximal extremity of this bone. We can see the articular cavity of the proximal phalanx for the articulation with the trochlea of the third metacarpal bone. On each side of, the, of this articular cavity, uh, we can see small projection called uh, like a prominence for ligament attachment. If we move to the Balmar view of the proximal phalanx here, we can see in the middle uh, the sagittal groove and the triangular area here. 
and uh, on each side here if you look exactly we have like a bony uh, ridge and this study of course we have the trochlea of the proximal phalanx further articulation with the next phalanx which is the middle phalanx uh, the middle phalanx in the um, uh, dorsal view here has in the middle uh, of course we have the articular surface here for the articulation with B1 and in this view we have the articular surface sorry articular surface of course and the extensor process here we have the extensor process and uh, down we have the trochlea of the middle phalanx uh, for the articulation of course with the coffin bone or the B3 uh, if we move to the caudal or balmar view in this case of B2 we have the flexor tuberosity very clear here for the insertion of the SDF or the superficial digital flexor muscle so now let's move uh, and look at this bone here the distal phalanx or B3 it has like uh, as we said before its own very specific shape uh, and uh, normally it's embedded inside the hoof completely inside the hoof and that's why we name it also as a coffin bone in the dorsal view of this bone we can see in the middle here of course the articular surface for the articulation with b2 or the middle phalanx and in the dorsal view we have the extensor process here for the insertion of the common digital extensor muscle here we have the parietal surface parietal surface with on each side like a parietal groove here and there the parietal groove the line here or the border called the solar borders and the tip of the bone called the crania if we look at the balmar view of this uh, phalanx here we can see on each side the balmar process palmar process medial and lateral palmar process uh, the flexor surface is here the solar uh, foramen and uh, in front of the solar foramen here we can see this line is the semilunar line and of course the the the, the whole surface here called the solar surface Here between uh, the middle phalanx and the distal phalanx, uh, balmary, balmary, we have this small sesamoid bone. If you look at the shape of this bone, so it looks like a boat, and that's why we will name it also as a navicular bone. This navicular bone is extremely important as there are a lot of clinical cases related to this bone. So this bone articulates with the middle phalanx and it has a proximal border and a flexor service. And of course, here we have the articular service of the navicular bone to the middle phalanx.